Uh, but anyway, today uh, I'm going to talk to you about bloodborne pathogens, also uh, airborne pathogens, uh, and uh, how to prevent them and, and what to do in case you become exposed. So we all have the potential of becoming exposed to bloodborne and airborne pathogens. So give me some examples of what's a bloodborne pathogen sound like to you? What what kind of body substance might be? Blood. Blood, okay. Oh, good Frenchie. Right. Good boy. All right. What else? What else is out there? Saliva. Saliva, okay. Urine. All right. Vomit, that type of thing. Do we see any of that? All right, you folks that work in the parks and rec department, right? Maybe you got the little kids running around. Okay. Um, there's a potential. Uh, runny noses, certainly, yeah, there's a bloodborne there. You know, a vicious paper cut at the library, okay, could be a bloodborne pathogen uh, threat, right? Okay, I'm going to pick on you, Josh. Okay. All right. Um, anyway, um, so how do we prevent any sort of contamination to ourselves? Well, gloves are one thing that we use. Uh, everybody in, in the fire rescue department carries around uh, uh, non-latex gloves uh, to protect ourselves. We wear them for all our patients. Doesn't matter if it's uh, you know, an 85-year-old MMA or you know, a six-year-old kid. We wear gloves to protect them and ourselves. And I'd encourage all of you to have gloves available to you uh, for uh, making sure you don't become exposed to any sort of body substance. Uh, now, you know, when, when uh, you're, you're cleaning the restrooms, is there a potential there for any sort of contamination? Absolutely is. Do you wear gloves? I would, okay? <laughs> Think about what goes on in there, all right? Yeah, you want gloves. Um, all right, so first, first uh, when we talk about uh, bloodborne, airborne uh, types of stuff, we talk about the prevention thing. So gloves are the first line of defense, if you will, about uh, protecting ourselves. Now what about that airborne type one? Now give me some examples of what, what is an airborne pathogen? Mm -hmm. Sneezing, yeah, coughing, that type of thing, all right? So are we at risk for that? And again, I'll go back to the park and rec department, right? You got a bunch of petri dishes running around. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff going on there. So how do we protect ourselves? Well, uh, for one thing, encourage the person that's sneezing, coughing, whatever else, to cover their, their mouth or nose when they're doing it. And the way that we're teaching it now is by using your, <laughs> the crook of your arm and cover your nose that way. And that's why it's, it's not on your hands uh, and it, it lessens the uh, uh, cross-contamination that way. Okay, so if you ever see me see, you'll see me do it this, this way. It's kind of, yeah, it looks a little funny, but get used to doing that. Encourage your kids, encourage your people around you. That's the way that's being taught now uh, by the CDC. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can protect yourself with a mask. And all fire rescue folks carry a mask with them. I've got a little mustache on it, so people know whose it is. Uh, anyway, uh, we, we have these available in the ambulances. Uh, we will uh, use this to, uh, to protect ourselves, again, from any sort of, of contaminant. If we go into a patient's home, for instance, that maybe have a uh, flu virus or, or symptoms of a flu virus, we'll wear one of these to protect ourselves. Because am I the only person at risk? What about my family? Okay, if I get exposed to a bloodborne, airborne type of pathogen, I could potentially bring that home and pass it along to my family. And if anybody's ever met my wife, I don't want to make her mad. Okay? She's half Irish, half Italian, and you can see, you can see where that goes. All right. Um, all right. So, prevention. Any questions on the prevention part? First aid kits in your workplaces. Do you have gloves? Do you have masks? Do you have stuff like that? Anybody not? All right. If you do need some, see Steve, he'll get them for you. He's got a big budget. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let's talk about exposure. All right. So you, you try the prevention thing, but you got caught. Okay. You got some stuff on you. All right. Maybe it's your own, but uh, let's assume it's somebody else's. 
You need to report that. You need to report that. And what I mean by that is the chief talked about uh, doing uh, like a first report of injury. Uh, we want you to report. It may turn into nothing at all. However, uh, if there is some sort of virus that you don't want that that person just exposed you to, uh, you want that documented so you're protected down the road. All right, so that's the first thing you do. To your supervisor and say, hey, listen, I, I, I got some stuff on me. Quick paperwork, throw this to it, nothing to it. All right? Uh, first thing we're going to do is take care of any wounds, okay? If you've, got, if you've cut yourself, make sure you clean that up. Okay? Call 911 if you want to. We'll come up. We'll help you out. Okay? Glad to help you. Um, use soap and water if you can to clean it up. That helps uh, do that. If you get stuff splashed up in your eyes, uh, make sure you flush that out. You can use uh, just plain, clean water. Uh, some of the first aid kits have eye wash uh, in them. I know at Public Works and also at our uh, place, we have uh, fountains uh, to do that. Uh, the transfer station, does that have uh, uh, the fountain too? Yeah? Okay, good. So know how they work, okay? And, and then you know, flush yourself out really well. Um, and then we're going to administer first aid to that person. Right? And we're going to talk about that later on today. You get to see me twice. All right, uh, but uh, you want to render first aid to, the fir uh, to this person. And that might start with just, you know, calling us and, and getting us started that way so we can, we can help you, all right? Um, all right, so clean up the wound, clean up yourself there, and, and, uh, uh, and then uh, report it uh, after all said and done. Uh, and again, you can call the rescue to, to get some help. Um, and then if you have any questions, you can call me at the station and uh, be glad to answer any questions, help you through the process if necessary. Um, so um, that's, that's kind of the, the deal with the uh, bloodborne, airborne uh, pathogens. Every department should have a policy of uh, what to do in an emergency. We have one written specifically for the fire rescue department. If I become exposed to somebody's body fluids and it gets on my clothing, I don't take these clothes home. I wash them at the station so I don't cross-contaminate the laundry in, at my house. Uh, you folks should have uh, policies uh, developed uh, for what happens when we get exposed to that type of thing. What do we do? Be glad to help you with that policy. If you don't have one, be glad to sit down and, and look at your specific need and help you develop a policy to, uh, to take care of that. Then it's all spelled out. It's all black and white, and if you have the exposure, you can just start right at the top of the page and work right down and, and uh, get the help you need. Um, so uh, you'll, you'll notice that we also, uh, in, the, in the fire department, you'll see us at car accidents all the time, we're wearing our bunker gear, our fire protective gear. Uh, it's not because you know we want like that in August and it's nice and hot on a turnpike or whatever else, but that has a protective barrier to it as well. So we're again taking uh, that precaution at first. If we can, if we can prevent an exposure, we're way ahead of the game. Yes. Mike, uh, it is um, Dave the lab. Um, it's from the rack on the view. Okay. Uh, piece of equipment maybe been on there for a day or or two. How do we want just wash that off? Soap and water. Soap and water will clean it. With you know, wear some gloves and that type of thing. Absolutely. Uh, there are some viruses that are out there that, that, uh, with, uh, that are, are uh, less sturdy and, and they, they die really quickly, but there are other ones out there uh, that uh, will linger on for quite a while. So if you do come across something that does have blood on it or you know, vomit or, or some other bo uh, body fluid, uh, yeah, it's best to clean it off. Just soap and water works really well. Uh, bleach also kills a lot of uh, uh, bacteria and also uh, some germs uh, that, uh, that are out there. So uh, don't be afraid to use that. Dilute it with some water and, and, uh, uh, and clean it up that way, but uh, certainly with gloves. Uh, and uh, when we're talking about gloves, when you're putting on uh, gloves and everything else, uh, you know, make sure you got to uh, you know, them on and, and they protect your hands. And then when you take them off, just kind of peel them down and, and peel them uh, away from your, your body 
uh, and dispose of them in, in, a, in a regular trash can is fine. Uh, we don't use a biohazard bag or red bags with the, the markers on them unless we get a lot of uh, you know blood saturated uh, gauze or that type of thing. Most of the time, all the stuff that we use in the back of the ambulance and everything else just goes into a regular trash. It's, there's nothing uh, there that has to be handled in a, in, a, in a special way. The only things in our ambulances that are handled in a special way are, are needles. Uh, when we have to give somebody a shot or shot an IV, uh, we have a separate container for uh, collecting that. And that brings up, you know, sometimes you may find uh, a syringe, you may find a needle uh, maybe it's at Woody's Beach, maybe it's uh, uh, at the transfer station, that type of thing. If you find that, give us a call, okay? We're gonna come, we're gonna help you, and we have the proper disposal uh, techniques and, and uh, facilities to take care of that, okay? So we, we will take care of that for you, okay? Don't, don't pick it up yourself. I was gonna just ask if you want to just stand by the area until you get there. Yep, yep. Keep people away or, or? Yeah, yep, yep, you can do that. And if for some reason, you know, we're just not around, you know, we're, we're busy, uh, like this morning, uh, you know, uh, you could, uh, you know, uh, pick it up with a gloved hand and, and put it in like a cardboard box and just handle, handle it very gently, as, as little as possible, and set it aside where nobody else can get a hold of it, if that's the last resort. Okay. Yes? Not in the cardboard box. Well, put it in a sturdy plastic yeah. container. Yeah, like, a, a, like one of those uh, uh, recycling bins would work really well. Well, yeah, not the plastic uh, water bottle. Those are pretty thin walls, so the needle could actually come right through that. That'd be a bad day. Well, I we know. we recommend using tide bottles, from the, the heavy detergent bottles. Yep. Because we handle needles from house walls all the time, mm -hmm. and they can dispose of it in the trash to be perfectly yep. accessible. Okay. But that how DDP everybody says to put it in a sturdy. Yeah, now, see, we, we have to have it in a, a specific uh, container right. that has so many mils thick and, and it's, it's designed. So if they're telling you that, then you know, they're the guys that make the rules. So, um, and, and there are folks out there, there are diabetics and other folks that are out there that, that uh, use needles on a daily basis, and they have to be able to dispose of them. And, and uh, that's, that's probably where they're gonna come, to your, your place, and, and uh, take care of it. Um, so. Anyway, any other questions on bloodborne, airborne pathogens? Uh, another comment? Yes, Just sure, to, uh, absolutely. Our potential for exposure is 99% of the time we'll have no idea who it's from. Right. So we don't know if it's contaminated, we don't know right. what we might be exposed to. Right, yeah, yeah, so you, you folks so are at risk. The, what's the suspect that you've gotten body fluid on you, but you don't know where it came from. All right. That if So his question is, if you get a body fluid and you don't know where it came from or anything like that, what do I do? Well, you're going to, you know, your clothes are not going to go home, okay? We're going to protect you and your family. Uh, and uh, then you need, to, you need to be clean, okay? Just, you know, shower, uh, that type of thing. If there's been a needle stick or, or there's been some sort of puncture to your body, then uh, more than likely you'll be uh, going to see the occupational health folks that we use here in the town to, uh, they may uh, take uh, blood from you to, to check you, and then they may start you on some prophylactic types of medication to uh, safeguard you from any sort of disease you might have gotten. And okay. so all that, Yes, absolutely. Yep. Uh, along, you know, along with you know, how do we contact these folks? Uh, you know, what's what's the policy and everything else? After hours, how do I contact them? Because you know, let's face it, we're not always there nine to five. So uh, again, if, if you need help with with setting up one of these policies, glad to help you with it. Okay, we can. Ours is kind of a boilerplate to start with, and we can we can uh, tailor make it to you. Uh, I think I addressed those. Yes. It would seem to me that um, it's 
especially those that are a higher risk, like Randy's folks, um, you folks, public works, probably maintenance as well, um, that they have a spare set of clothing that they keep at work in the event that they never have to use them. Um, additionally, would it be appropriate that if for some reason they have been exposed, that um, once they remove their clothing, um, that we could take them to the public safety building and wash them? Is that like you do for your public safety folks? Well, it's a major event. We can heat on you, but uh, that's, that's rather a public affair that we don't want to go through. Um, we use Tyvek suits. We've got these white Tyvek suits, so if you have to dispose of your clothing and leave it, go home in a Tyvek suit at least. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah those disposable white. They're great at Halloween, too. <laughs> so as far as laundering their clothing, though, rather than taking it home, would that be something that... Well, if it's really bad, it's all right. Yeah, if it's, if it's completely saturated, we... Yeah, we... Okay. You have a word again, anyway. I mean, I don't know what kind of a scenario these folks would go to that it would be that bad. Right, yeah. You're talking about something on your hands or you got it on your sleeve or you know you maybe stepped in it but i don't i don't know if you get that i think if it's a major event where you go out and somehow saturated or sprayed with blood you're going to be calling us yeah and okay. that is 24 hours and we can yeah you get the unit stripped down you put on a tyvek suit you got extra tyvek suits <laughs> yeah. We got yeah we have we have a bunch of, and uh, we also have hospital scrubs that we wear uh, uh, you know, if, if we go to a hospital and we've been exposed, that's what they'll give us uh, to, to wear back. Um, uh, you know, so we don't have to streak back. It's, it's, anyway, uh, anyway uh, so uh, at the very least, what we can do is, is contain it into a, uh, a bag that the, uh, designates it as, as uh, <coughs> contaminated and deal with it after that. Yeah. At the very least, we can do that. We carry all that stuff right on board our ambulances too. So, uh, you know, if you do have a major exposure where you know you want to take care of that stuff, just give us a shout. We'll show up and you know give you a bag and let you let you take care of that. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? All right, everybody still awake? All right, good. Right. We are. Do another uh, draw.